I've also known our next speaker for many years and uh, first got to know him uh, through, I think it's called the Iowa Farm Unity Coalition. He may correct me if I didn't get that quite right. And then he also helped run the Jesse Jackson campaign here in Iowa. He's gone on to many other uh, campaigns and candidates and, uh, and work on, on his own as well. I'm proud to uh, introduce to you John Norris, a candidate for governor. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here with the revolution and every, everything you fight for and we fight for. I met several new people tonight. Thank you so much for welcoming me to be a part of this event. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Chris, for your organization and all of you for being here. This is a campaign and a fight to contest for power against the wealthy special interests and corporate lobbyists who control our government today. This is about returning our government to the government for the people. Empowering people and have a government that works for people, not for special interests. I have fought my entire life for economic and social justice. This is an extension of that fight and why I'm asking for your support to be governor of Iowa and make Iowa government a government for the people, not the special interests. When I worked with Tom Harkin to pass the Americans with Disabilities Act, it was about empowering disabled Iowans and Americans to have equal opportunity to succeed and, and flourish in their life in America. When I marched with Cesar Chavez in California with migrant workers, it was about environmental justice. When I marched with Paul Wellstone in Seattle against the WTO, it was about justice for American workers and trade deals that hurt the American economy and American workers and small businesses. This fight today is as important as any fight we've had about economic and social justice. It is about, it is about support for public education for the future of all of our children in this state. It is about rolling it back this privatization of Medicaid, which was, which was designed for profits for insurance companies, not for health care for our most vulnerable citizens. It's a, fight, it's a fight for environmental justice and stopping, as, as Mike just said, the CAFOs and the industrial agriculture who are poisoning our water today and protecting our land for future generations. This is a fight, this is a fight that we've got to engage in. I ask you all to engage in this fight because it's about your future, our state's future, and the future of democracy, literally. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we've got to raise the standard of living for so many Iowans who live in poverty today. Over half of our children in this state are born eligible for Medicaid. Over half of our children in this state are eligible for free and reduced lunch. Which means over half the children in this state are born into poverty. Not one of those children can expect their parents to be saving for their college education. If we want to extend the opportunity for all people in this state and all children in this state, we have got to make college education a reality for all of our children, not just those with wealthy parents. I want to tell you a quick story. When I, showed, when I announced my candidacy for governor, I started on my family farm in southwest Iowa, where my family still farms today. And then we went to Storm Lake, Iowa. I went to Storm Lake, Iowa with purpose. Because I want to stand on the shores of Storm Lake and talk about what it means to have a governor with vision that brings people together. Because Governor Ray, which many of you over there don't know, but he had the vision and understood the values of Iowans when he welcomed Southeast Asian refugees to Iowa following the Vietnam War. We have to embrace our new Iowans as much as we embrace, embrace fifth generation Iowans like myself. And 37 years ago, a gentleman named Adi Pompasay, when he was seven years old, moved to Alta, Iowa with his family from Laos because Governor Ray knew Iowans, we were welcoming to new Iowans. As Adi tells it, 
the church ladies of Alta knew if he and his brother and sister were to succeed, that they had to learn the English language, and they embraced them for their success. Adi is now the principal at my son's middle school. His brother and sister have gone on to incredible successful careers because the church ladies of Alta embraced new Iowans and made them a part of their community. We don't have enough church ladies to go around these days, folks. We, as our schools and our communities, have to embrace new Iowans as a part of our future, make their success tied to our future because it is tied to our future. And what better leadership for Iowa in the backdrop of Charlottesville than for Iowa to say that we welcome people no matter the color of their skin, the language they speak, their religion, where they come from. They are all a part of our future. They are all a part of what we have to commit ourselves to as a welcoming state for all Iowans. We have to confront that issue in Iowa and especially in rural Iowa and roll back the racism and hate and division of Donald Trump in this last election and realize that all of our economic future is based on all of us succeeding and not dividing and blame someone else. That is the essence of our future in this state. Let me close, since I'm up here in this bandstand, where I used to play as an amateur for the Equal Justice Foundation Benefit Concert that I helped form in Iowa City years ago. And it's an honor to be here with Dave and Greg and what you, and professional musicians. Let me close with Woody Guthrie. I've seen a lot of funny men. Some will kill you with a six, back, six gun, some with a fountain pen. No matter where through your life you roam, I'll never see an outlaw drive a family from their home. Folks, the folks with fountain pens are running our government today. They're driving people from their home. They're taking advantage of their economic vulnerability that this governor and this government is extending by striking collective bargaining rights, taking away county's right to raise minimum wage. And we've got to fight back for economic opportunity for all Iowans. That's what my campaign is about. Contesting for power against the wealthy special interests and corporate lobbyists who run our government today. Join me in this fight. Join this, this fight for economic justice and social justice for all Iowans. We will reclaim our government as one for the people. Thank you very much.